Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Democrats say they despise Donald Trump. They seem to mean it. They tell us they'll do anything to prevent him from continuing as president. But if that's really true, why are they working so hard to sabotage their own chances of replacing him? Why are Democrats suddenly saying things that all but guarantee Trump's reelection as president? In just the past few months, Democrats have said things that are so out of the mainstream that it's very hard to imagine voters will back them. Just last night on CNN, watch Bernie Sanders, the front runner, endorse voting for felons who are currently behind bars. Watch this. If somebody commits a serious crime, sexual assault, murder, they're going to be punished. They may be in jail for 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, their whole lives. That's what happens when you commit a serious crime. But I think the right to vote is inherent to our democracy. Yes, even for terrible people. Terrible people. So how terrible is Sanders talking about? Cannibals? Convicted spies? How about terrorists who kill children? Oh, yes, said Bernie Sanders. They get the vote, too. Unlike the First or Second Amendments, that's in the Constitution. Senator Kamala Harris seemed to agree with that. But people who are in, convicted in prison, like the Boston Marathon bomber, on death row, people who are convicted of sexual assault, they should be able to vote? I think we should have that conversation. Okay. Let's have that conversation. Best to do it right now, actually, because whenever the left tells you they want a conversation about something, you can be certain that any dissent on that subject will be banned a year from now. By 2020, questioning whether imprisoned terrorists should vote or you a trip to the HR department and a lifetime ban from PayPal and Twitter. So while we still can, consider the story of Jokar Zarnayev. Zarnayev first came to the United States, you'll remember, on a tourist visa with the rest of his family from Kyrgyzstan. All of them promptly claimed asylum here. They were given it. Over time, the Zarnayevs collected more than $100,000 in taxpayer financed government benefits. In 2012, Zarnayev received U.S. citizenship. And then, less than a year later, he murdered three people and maimed hundreds with a pressure cooker bomb at the Boston Marathon. Now he's on death row. So Democrats hear that story and they feel outrage. It's not that immigrants repaid our generosity with a terror attack. That may bother you. It doesn't bother them. The injustice they're enraged by is that a convicted terrorist might not be allowed to help pick our next president. That's outrageous in their view. It's just the kind of institutionalized bigotry that Kyrgyzstani refugees like the Zarnayevs have faced historically in this country. Maybe they need reparations, too. They definitely need a voice. So do the convicts of West Feliciana Parish, Louisiana. Of the 15,000 people who live in that parish, fully one-third of them are inmates at the maximum security Angola State Prison Farm. They are the single largest block of voters in the area. According to Bernie Sanders, this is bad because they're being denied democracy. That's racist. Once Bernie Sanders is president, they'll be able to elect the city council and the sheriff, maybe the warden, too. That's the kind of progress we're talking about here.